Welcome to today's lesson. Today we are looking at hemorrhoids. And my names are Last Game Skuma Maimba. Lesson is by the end of the session, students should be able to define what hemorrhoids are, give a simple description of the applied anatomy or the anocution. Secondary, the student should be able to discuss the causes, describe the pathophysiology of hemorrhoids. Thereafter, the student, by the end of the lesson, should be able to diagnose hemorrhoids, be able to order appropriate investigations and institute the correct management to a patient that comes with or without complications. The outline of the lessons will define what hemorrhoids are, look at the anatomy, the etiology, the pathophysiology, the clinical manifestation or presentation, will zero in on the diagnosis, then consider the management, and then the complications that hemorrhoids present with. So just to start with, let's define what hemorrhoids, what are hemorrhoids? In your own words, what do you think hemorrhoids are? Okay, hemorrhoids can be defined as dilated submucosa veins in the anus. Hemorrhoids can also be defined as an abnormal sliding down of the anocretion. The anus of an adult is about 4 to 5 centimeters long. It is divided into two parts. Two-thirds of it is covered by the rectal mucosa, which is thrown into folds, and the lower third is covered by skin or squamous cell epithelium. And this anocution is there just to tighten the ano canal. This picture just describes uh, what we are looking at. We are able to see the rectal mucosa and then uh, the upper two third we are seeing uh, the columns or the mucosa being thrown into folds and then we are able to see the Dante line that demarcates the inner and the outer part of the anus the Dante line is the one that also helps with the classification of hemorrhoids. Those that are above it are considered to be internal hemorrhoids and those are below it are considered to be external hemorrhoids. We are able to see also the muscles that are there around the anal region, the elevator ani muscle, and then we are able to see the external sphincter ani muscle, those that are deep and uh, subcutaneous and then superficial muscles of these external sphincter ani muscles. The anocution has the normal anodem and it is an area of vascular anastomosis. And these vessels are found within the stroma or the submucosa smooth muscles and they contribute about 15 to 20 percent of the normal resting pressure in the anus, and they also help, the anal fission, uh, cushion also help to feed into the sensory information of the anal region. The anal cushion is located in the upper anal canal of the submucosa tissue containing connective tissue, uh, venous plexus of veins, and then smooth muscle fibers. And these we've seen that they are the ones that constitute the anocretion. Coming to the etiology or the causes of hemorrhoids. 90% of hemorrhoids, the cause is unknown. The remainder is thought to be caused by straining that can come as a result of constipation. Constipation which will result from a patient not having high roughage diet, not drinking adequate water, and not having a good bowel movement. The other cause of straining could be due to rectal sigmoid masses that will cause a patient to strain, to push uh, as they are opening bowels. 
then weightlifting can predispose one uh, to developing hemorrhoids, standing long hours, sitting long hours, pregnancy, even bladder outlet obstruction can lead uh, to development of hemorrhoids. So hemorrhoids basically form because of the increased pressure uh, in the anal canal because of hard stool that form. This picture just depicting also uh, hemorrhoids and the anal canal and its, uh, its sphincters, the internal and the external anal sphincters that help to close and help with the bowel uh, opening. And then we are able to see that those that are above the pacnet line or dentin line, those are internal hemorrhoids and those that are below are external hemorrhoids. We are able to see also the picture is able to show us the perianal vessels, uh, blood vessels, and then prolapsing internal hemorrhoids that will move from the internal aspect to the outer aspect. And these are the ones we'll see later how they are graded. So how do hemorrhoids form? Like we've already said, anocution disruption that results from the force of defecation, especially with the passage of hard stool. And this causes uh, the excessive straining or cause the uh, down shearing uh, or the anocution and hence hemorrhoid formation. And when we do a histological examination, when we get the tissue or the anocution and examine it under the microscope will be able to discover dilated anocution uh, vessels. How do we classify hemorrhoids? Hemorrhoids can be classified in twofold. The first classification is in relationship to the uh, Dante line or the pertinent line. And under this classification, hemorrhoids can be classified as internal hemorrhoids and external hemorrhoids. For internal hemorrhoids, these are derived from the internal hemorrhoidal plexus, which is about the dentin line, covered in rectal mucosa, usually located on three sides, the left lateral, the right anterior, and the right posterior. The left Lateral will be found at 3 o'clock. Then the right anterior will be there at 10 to 11 o'clock and the posterior one will be between 7 and 8 o'clock. And we are able to see that uh, a picture just showing in relationship to the clock of internal hemorrhoids when you do a direct digital exam, uh, rectal examination, you'll be able to feel them on those areas. And this picture also gives us a colored uh, parts of uh, hemorrhoids. We see those plum colored mm -hmm. internal hemorrhoids and black uh, cutaneous external component that is there. This picture also helps us just to have an understanding of internal hemorrhoids and how they will appear. External hemorrhoids are derived from the external hemorrhoidal plexus below the dentin line covered by stratified squamous cell epithelium or skin. And we are able to see that these are the ones that tend to mostly thrombose. And then there are those prolapsing hemorrhoids, internal hemorrhoids that will prolapse and then find their way externally coming from inside to the outside. The second classification of hemorrhoids is classified according to grades or degrees, one to four. So for the first degree, the hemorrhoid will be bleeding, but it will not prolapse. It will be in the internal aspect of the anal canal. The cushion will, sh will shear down, but it will be within the uh, anal cushion or the anal canal. It will bleed without prolapse. The second degree the hemorrhoid will bleed and it will prolapse. 
but will spontaneously reduce, meaning that it will go back on its own after the straining is uh, no longer there. The third degree, the hemorrhoid will bleed, then will prolapse, but after the straining is stopped, they do not reduce spontaneously, but will require manual reduction. Usually they are just pushed back with fingers. Then the fourth degree, the hemorrhoids will prolapse, bleed, and they will constantly remain prolapsed. Even if you try manual reduction, you will not be able to manually reduce them. So this is a grading or the degree one to four of hemorrhoid classification. How will the patient with hemorrhoids present when they come to our clinic or when they reach the OPD, you are the clinician on duty. What will the patient present with? Just picture from what we've learned so far on the classification of hemorrhoids. What do you think the patient will present with? Okay, number one, the patient will present with bright red breeding post uh, opening of bowels or defecation that stops spontaneously. Uh, this can also lead to perianal irritation. If the hemorrhoids have prolapsed, there will be vesicle masses that will be felt around the anal area. Usually this is a rate manifestation. And this can also lead to a patient presenting with mucoid discharge. If the breeding persists or become profuse, the patient may be pale or present with anemia. And when the hemorrhoids complicate, they may present with pain. And if the prolapsed uh, hemorrhoids are not dealt with, they'll become bigger and then they'll present as a mass per anno. On examination, what are we able to find and how do we approach the examination of the patient that comes with hemorrhoids? So on examination, we examine, we look at the general presentation of the patient. Their gait, we look at their facial expression and then we do a physical we do an abdominal and pelvic examination. Here we are trying to look for underlying causes or aggravating factors. Like we said, they could be constipated. These are patients uh, that could have uh, a bladder outright obstruction. These are patients that could be pregnant. And those are some of the uh, aggravating factors. And then when we do a rectal examination, we'll start first with inspection we see if it's grade 3 and 4, the, pro, the hemorrhoids will be obviously prolapsed. But if it's grade 2, you ask the patient to strain and you'll be able to see the hemorrhoids uh, prolapse on straining and then they spontaneously reduce. And then those that have had hemorrhoids for some time and they've modified their diet, you'll be able to see redundant tissue folds or skin tags around the anal region. So when you do a digital uh, rectal examination, it may show a prolapsed or thrombosed hemorrhoid. Internal hemorrhoids are not felt unless they are prolapsed. So grade one or first degree cannot be felt, but grade two to four on digital rectal examination, you'll be able to feel them. The slide here is showing a picture of different types of prolapse, powers or hemorrhoids and their color and stage. The following picture also, figure 2.25.30, uh, shows a thrombosed uh, hemorrhoid or power, not the color of this thrombosed uh, hemorrhoid. Thrombosed hemorrhoids tend to be very painful and tender on examination. Just touching or just uh, palpating on it, it will present with severe pain. 
how do we investigate a patient that presents with hemorrhoids? Okay, so our investigations will be grouped into two. Those that are specific and those that are supportive. We'll start with a specific. Protoscopy is a specific uh, type of investigation that one would institute. Proctoscopy, this is to visualize the internal hemorrhoids. You push in uh, a rectal speculum that will give you the view of the internal anal canal or it will, you'll be able to visualize the anal question and this you'll be able to see uh, the hemorrhoids if they are there and if there are any other region within the anal canal and the rectum. And then the supportive uh, investigations that one would do is a full blood count. Already in our clinical picture, we saw that this is a patient that bleeds. So you would want to look at the HB. Is this patient anemic or not? Not only that, you all are also interested uh, on the preterates. How is the preterate count? Is it normal or is the patient uh, thrombocytopenic? If the preterate count is low or they have thrombocytopenia, that could be a differential because patients tend to bleed at uh, less than 50 uh, preterates uh, count times 10 to the power 9. So you would want to rule that one out. Then you can correct blood for grouping and cross match and save if the patient is severely anemic because they may need a blood transfusion. Also looking at the clotting profile, you get blood, look at bed, uh, bedtime clotting time. Uh, then you also look at the prothrombin time just to look if there is any coagulopathy in the blood that would precipitate to a patient bleed per lecture. And then we can also do urea, creatinine, and the liver function test to rule out other causes and complications that would cause a per rectal bleed. How do we diagnose a patient that comes with hemorrhoids? Diagnosis of hemorrhoids is based on a good case history proper physical examination, and then proctoscopy. These three added together will help us come up with a proper diagnosis. At times, just good case history and physical examination, you'll be able to make a diagnosis. How do we manage or approach the management of this patient that presents with hemorrhoids? Hemorrhoids can be managed in three folds, depending on the degree or the grade. There is a conservative management, the medical management, and the operative or surgical management. Conservative management is applicable for grade one hemorrhoids, those that just bleed and do not prolapse, and grade two also uh, that bleed prolapse and spontaneously reduce. So for the conservative management, you encourage the patient to have a high fiber diet for regular soft and bulk motion. You would want the patient to be opening bowels frequently and fiber or roughage will help to do that. And asking the patient also to take plenty of fluid, this will help even the patient to be managed as in a conservative way. And under the conservative management, we can also add the medical aspect where you use hydrophilic creams or suppositories. These are creams that uh, attract water to them so that there is bowel movement. And then if the patient is in pain, application of local analgesia ointment or suppositories will help also the patient. And this form, the conservative 
and medical management of the patient that present with hemorrhoids. For the operative or surgical approach or management of the patient with hemorrhoids, the indications for surgical or operative management is or are third degree to fourth degree hemorrhoids. These require operative management. Then if the conservative and medical management for second degree hemorrhoids has failed, then you can also institute the operative treatment. Even hemorrhoids that have uh, fibrosed also need operative management. Even internal hemorrhoids that have prolapsed externally and they have well-defined external hemorrhoids, these also need operative approach of management of hemorrhoids. Notwithstanding that the conservative uh, uh, aspect also of high fiber diet, regardless of the degree, should be instituted as you manage this patient. Then how do we approach a patient that has hemorrhoids and presents with complication? So we'll try to consider the complications that are there and then the management. Even if I'll give the slide of complications at the later stage, but from our clinical presentation, we see that hemorrhoids can be strangulated, thrombosed, or become gangrenous. And these may require uh, immediate intervention, surgical intervention. Then since the strangulation and cell death, they may also require adequate uh, antibiotic cover with broad spectrum antibiotic. Usually we can consider uh, kephalosporins third generations like keftriaxone, uh with metronindazole. And then since they are thrombosed and they tend to be painful, they need adequate analgesia. So you start stepping up in the analgesia ladder. These are patients that may also uh, require after surgery bed rest, seat baths, and then just compression of the anal region with uh, warm saline. And following excision, uh, the, pa the patient can also may need dilatation so that there is no reoccurrence of the hemorrhoids. If the patient presents with severe hemorrhoids or bleeding, they need to be resuscitated. You give them IV fluids, even as you are running bloods for full blood count, grouping, cross match, and save. And depending on the HB, if they're severely anemic after the fluids, you can give them a blood transfusion. If they are still bleeding profusely, you need to do a local compression with adrenaline uh, soaked gauze. Uh, uh, that will help reduce the bleeding as the adrenaline will cause vasoconstriction. Then also pain relief, uh, if pain is there, may be needed. Just to summarize the treatment options for hemorrhoids for grade 1 through 4, Grade 1, we said a patient who presents with bleeding but no prolapse is just dietary modification suffices. Second degree, the patient may present with bleeding, prolapse, and there will be spontaneous reduction of the hemorrhoid. Rubber band uh, derogation is the treatment of choice. But if there is continuous bleeding or seepage of blood, coagulation may be needed and dietary modification uh, can be instituted. For the third degree, we said the patient will bleed, the hemorrhoids will prolapse, but will require digital reduction. So surgical uh, hemorrhoidectomy is required. But if the patient persists uh, bleeding and the seepage of blood, uh, rubber band uh, ligation is required and then also dietary modification, like I alluded to, all the four forms or, or degrees or grades of hemorrhoids still need dietary 
modification. For the fourth degree, the hemorrhoids will bleed, prolapse, but cannot reduce, and these tend to be strangulated. So if it's just prolapse and cannot be reduced, just surgical or hemorrhoidectomy is uh, required. So it, the patient can be planned and scheduled for surgery. But if there's strangulation, this one need urgent uh, hemorrhoidectomy. It's an emergency and they need uh, surgery there and then. Then for external hemorrhoids, like we said, there are internal hemorrhoids and external hemorrhoids. In external hemorrhoids, these are the ones that are below the Dantin line. And these tend to uh, uh, thrombose most of the time. And they tend to have a perianal hematoma, usually associated with severe or considerable pain. Uh, these tend to appear inflamed, tense, and is visible just on inspection of the anal veg. Treatment, you relieve the pain by local or oral analgesia and avoid constipation by dietary modification, patient taking high fiber diet. And the hematoma needs to be surgically evacuated or the clot needs to be removed under local anesthesia and that will bring relief and the patient should also do sit bath because the area tends to be dead so tds or three times sit baths will help to keep the area clean or whenever they open bowels they wash the area and then do sit baths that will help avoid infection so what are the complications of hemorrhoids i'm sure it will be easier since some of them have already run through them number one we said there will be profuse bleeding, which may lead to anemia. Okay? Strangulation. Okay? Especially if the powers is being gripped by the anal sphincter. Then thrombosis will appear dark purple or black and feel solid and tender. Okay, laceration. If the strangulation it will become gangrenous and then form an ulcer. The hemorrhoid may heal with fibrosis, which may cause stenosis of the anus sphincter or the anus, or it can become superative, leading to periano or submucosa abscesses. So this is what we looked at on hemorrhoids. First, we defined what hemorrhoids are. We should know them. Then the anal question and how hemorrhoids are formed. Thereafter, we considered the clinical picture and how we can make a diagnosis and the management uh, for the different types of hemorrhoids or the grades of hemorrhoids. And then we've also considered the complications that hemorrhoids come with. I hope by the end of this lesson now, we are able, as we are ending the lesson, we'll be able to diagnose hemorrhoids. And our clinical acumen would have increased and we'll be able to manage this patient if we can manage locally and if we can't manage at our center, be able to refer the patient in good time.